Alrighty guys, Quantum back here again with another PvP weapon review and this time we're going to be taking a look at one of the weapons that came out in the Ashes DLC, the Piercing Sword known as the Crow Quills. Now, this weapon, obviously being a Piercing Sword, it is in contention with the S-Doc as to what Piercing Sword should I use if I wanted to use a Piercing Sword. And you may think, well, the S-Doc has been king of PvP for quite a long time in terms of uh, small weapons, right? It has great range, great damage, can be used on virtually any build because of low stat requirements. So how could this sword possibly replace the S-Doc? Well, there are advantages and disadvantages to the Crow Quills. Overall though, to answer the question in the thumbnail, to answer the question that probably many of you are thinking like, is this weapon actually worth it? Is it actually going to displace the S-Doc? And if you haven't guessed it already, the answer is definitely no, okay? Uh, while this weapon does have a lot more options available to it, right, in terms of what you can do with the weapon, uh, some of the advantages it has, like extra critical damage, which we'll discuss a little bit later, at the end of the day, the lack of range or the lack of the weapon's size um, matters, right? Size matters this time around. Sorry, guys. But uh, the S-Doc's longer reach, right, the fact that the actual piercing sword of the S-Doc is longer does make it that much better <laughs> for PvP. And the reason for that is simply because you can roll catch with it, you can attack at further safer ranges with the S-Doc. With the Crow Quills, you're really limited to attacking at super close ranges. And this is the reason why you see me using a shield in most of these clips, is because whenever you use small weapons, you have to get right up close to an opponent's face. And unless you're gonna be super focused and be ready to react roll on everything the opponent does, which, Technically, I guess you should be if you're trying to be competitive in PvP, but I'm kind of lazy, and as I approach, I just want to approach with my shield up, you know, roll through what I can, but if I make a mistake and I don't react in time to something, or if I'm trying to go for a bait, and I have my shield up, I know that I'm safe as I approach. So you can see here, I'm constantly right up in the opponent's face, and that is one disadvantage of this weapon, is that yes, you do have to be right up in the opponent's face, you will be taking hits with your shield more or less, and that means reduced stamina when you eventually try to attack, which can limit your rushdown capabilities. If you guys watch any of my build videos, any of my PvP, you know that we usually max out our stamina because we want to be able to chase down, dictate the match to the way that we want to play it, not the way the opponent wants to play it. And when you use a shield, it really slows that momentum down for you. And this is why you never see me use shields in any PvP, really, is because I prefer just to rush down play aggressive and just dictate the pace of the match. With the shield, you're playing a little bit more reactive, right? You're going up to an opponent with the shield up, you're waiting for him to bait out an attack, you're reacting to his attack, you know, so it slows down the match a little bit and as a result, your opponent has ways to exploit your game, basically. And so just by basic fundamentals of this weapon being a small weapon, it has that disadvantage. Also, it can be parried very easily since you do need to attack multiple times, there are multiple opportunities for opponents to parry you. And overall, uh, even though we go 6-0 in this fight club, we want a, a decent amount of matches, but when you're playing more competent players, it becomes a lot harder because you gotta remember, and I learned this the hard way, I guess this was a, a recent update that I may have missed when I wasn't playing the game, but if you attack through a shield, like if you have your shield up and you try to use a piercing sword through the shield, you will still take damage if your opponent attacks your shield. Also, you will take massive hits to your stamina in terms of stamina reduction if you try to attack through your shield and an opponent's weapon is also hitting your shield at the same time. So it really limits your ability and your uh, aggression if you're using this kind of setup. Now, of course, you can just use the weapon on its own, two-handed, which is technically what you want to do because the, L the L1 combo is actually really good with this weapon. But again, the issue is that you have to be very close in order to get that initial hit to start the combo, right? And then you, again, open yourself up to all of those risks by playing that close quarters game. One of the reasons why I love the katana, I'm sure many of you guys have seen, right? I'm totally a fanatic for the katana, right? It's my, In my opinion, one of the better weapons in the game is because you can play at a certain range where you always know that you're going to be safe. You can avoid damage at all costs because the katana's running attack, the katana's regular R1 is great at controlling the space in front of you, at closing down space and playing safe, and you don't have to really play overly reactive. If anything, you're aggressing on your opponent and you're forcing them to be reactive to your attacks, right? So 
that is the difference when using this weapon. Now, don't get me wrong, what this weapon does have going for it, and it's not like a totally bad weapon, the weapon is able to do a great amount of critical damage. In the very first clip of this video with that demo soundtrack over it, I don't remember the exact name of the song for those wondering, but you should be listening to all of the demo OST if you're wondering or if you like that song. Demo is a great game, great soundtrack. Anyways, uh, as you saw in the first clip, we did 1200 damage with the Hornet Ring from a backstab. Now, bearing in mind that opponent didn't have any armor on, and in other backstabs without the Hornet Ring, we were still doing around 700 to 800 points of critical damage. Again, damage will vary. But this weapon does have an excellent critical rating. And that's where this weapon can really shine. If you're going to go for a parry, if you're going to go for backstabs, which we do do numerous times, uh, that's kind of how you have to exploit the advantages of this weapon. And while I kind of shit on the whole shield and sword thing, you know, as you don't want to get too close, it has a bunch of disadvantages, it's not entirely devoid of merit, right? Having a shield up, being able to sidestep around opponents as they try to attack, and then being able to backstab them, that's still a viable tactic. However, when you go up against competent players, they're not likely going to let you get that off. So, yes, I'm not saying that it's completely devoid of merit. I'm not saying using a shield is useless. No, by no means am I saying that. But face a good player, they're not going to let you walk around them like that. They're, they're going to roll away. They're going to attack, contest, do something uh, to not get backstabbed, not get sidestepped, right? So while it may work for you know, some fights, it's not going to work for every fight and it's not a, a viable tactic to always rely on having your shield up and just trying to sidestep your opponent all day fishing for a backstab. You're not going to win the majority of your matches that way. So you can see that, you know, the way that I play in my play style, I still like to keep a distance and I still am using the running R1, which is not nearly as effective as the running R1 with an S-Dock or a Katana, simply because, again, the weapon is so short. So playing to the weapon's advantages, going for the criticals, uh, if you do get a critical with a knockdown, you, the L1 uh, follow-up uh, on, on an opponent's wake-up can be very good to catch them and instantly combo them to death. So it does have its uses for uh, really explosive damage, which is kind of weird for a small weapon. I guess that's one thing it really does have going for it, is that you can definitely um, deal like ultra weapon damage from this smaller weapon. But then again, you know, when you think about other weapons in the game, like a dagger can do that too, right? If you get a a repose with it with a dagger um, just a regular dagger which has 130 critical rating it, it does a lot of damage as well um, so this weapon is kind of like that middle ground in between uh, being a weapon that can be used for regular attacks dealing a moderate decent amount of damage not something great not something too low like a dagger while at the same time having that benefit of the massive critical damage that you can dish out potentially right so that that's where this weapon's merits lie, in my opinion. And it's not really as useful as an S-Dock because, again, you're not going to try to fish for criticals on every single match. Or if you are, you're not going to get them every single match. It's very situational. Your opponents can use ultra weapons, which are unparryable. And if you're fishing for backstabs, you're going to get punished against a competent player. So this weapon, it's not... Again, when, when, we, when we look at uh, the overall utility, the weapon is not something where what it has going for it in terms of its critical damage and stuff is going to be useful in 100% of situations. Whereas the s docks utility, air quotes, is the fact that it's just a long, good damage, decent weapon, and that's useful in 100% of your matchups, right? The s docks range is going to be beneficial to you in every single match you play, whereas the Crow Quills, the shorter range is going to be a real limitation on the way that you approach PvP. And before we close it out, uh, I didn't talk about the weapon art, but the weapon art is 100% useless. Um, the L2 is a th uh, jump up in the air throwing daggers. It's literally the same thing as a throwing knife, so it really doesn't have much use. It deals very, very low damage, like between you know, like 10 and 30 points of damage. And the follow-up R2 is a lunge forward that does not even combo. If the R2 would have comboed into the first L2, the dagger throw, because the dagger throw does stagger opponents, it may have been better, but unfortunately it doesn't, and the, you know, just the tracking and the reach isn't very good on the weapon, which makes the weapon art virtually useless in my opinion. But anyways, guys, that is the weapon. Let me know what you think. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you understood where I was coming from with this analysis. But let me know what you think. Let me know what other weapons you want to see. That is it for now. Quantum is out.